Our language, our wonderful English language, is filled with cliches, is it not? <laughs> Time will tell. No news is good news. What goes around comes around. And keep calm and carry on. We also use Christian cliches, perhaps a bit too often. Terms and expressions like fellowship. It's God's will. And even praise the Lord. There's a danger that these things can lose their impact because of overuse. And as we come to the, to the end of the book of Psalms, we notice that each of these last five Psalms in this series begins with praise the Lord. And each of these last Psalms, Psalms increases in its, its praise and its joy until we come to the last of all, Psalm 150, which we've had read this morning. Now, for the psalmist... Praise the Lord was definitely not a cliché, but an ecstatic expression of unbridled joy. In six short verses, he uses the phrase 13 times. The word praise is derived from the Latin word, which means to prize. When we praise, we are expressing our approval by valuing someone or something that has worth or merit. The word also means to shine, to make a show of something or someone. To praise the Lord then is to prize him, to celebrate him as the one who is worthy of glory and honour. Now, where are we to praise him? Verse 1 begins with a bang. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens. So the psalmist uses the words that mean the self-existent and the, the eternal one and strong and mighty. These are big concepts about who God is. We are to praise the eternal, strong and mighty God in his sanctuary, which is a reference to the temple where God used to dwell. Since Jesus died and rose again, God now tabernacles or dwells, not within a building, but within his people. We are his temple and therefore should live out what that means. God does not reside in this church building. He resides within us, his church. To call, the call to praise extends to the mighty heavens. So everything in heaven and earth is called to praise God. Verse 1 answers that question. Where are we to praise him? We are to praise him everywhere. Verse 2 gives us the answer to another question, why are we to praise him? We're called to be excited about God for at least two reasons. I hope there are many more. First, we praise him for what he does. We see this in the first part of verse 2. Praise him for his acts of power. This is the theme of many of the Psalms. The phrase, acts of power, carries with it the idea of God as a champion because of the victory he has won. His acts of power are displayed in all of creation, this beautiful world that we enjoy, in all of our lives too, as we enjoy all the benefits of his grace and forgiveness and salvation. So we praise God for what he has done in our lives, bringing healing and hope, and that's great. But we're also to praise him for who he is. That's the second part of verse 2. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. This idea crops up a number of times in this group of psalms. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Psalm 145. Or a Psalm 147 says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. When we praise God for who he is, we are recognising his surpassing greatness, or as the Hebrew indicates, his greatness and abundant magnitude. Well, that's a very grand title, isn't it? His greatness and abundant magnitude. But this is a good reminder for us. When we praise him, we should do it for what he's done in our lives, and we should praise him for who he is. And as we move to the next section, verses 3 to 5, we learn how to praise God. Many of us would be a bit uncomfortable if we worshipped the way the Israelites did. Their music 
was loud and boisterous. And Psalm 150 describes this perfectly. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. The Israelites used three types of instruments mainly, that the wind instrument, string instrument, percussion instrument. All three are used in this pinnacle of praise in Psalm 150. The first instrument is used is the trumpet, also known as the shofar or the ram's horn. It was the greatest of the instruments that the Israelites used and can be heard for many, many miles away. And it's still used, the shofar is still used in Jerusalem to announce the beginning of the Sabbath. When a group of us were in Jerusalem a year or so ago, we were treated to an impromptu concert of shofars when musicians appeared out of nowhere, it seemed, on a hillside to play for us. The sound of the trumpet in the Old Testament is associated with the grandest and most solemn events, such as the giving of the law, the proclamation of jubilee, the, the crowning of kings, the waging of war. The trumpet will also be heard again when Jesus returns and the dead are raised. It says in 1 Corinthians, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. After the blast of the trumpet, verse 3 calls us to praise him with harp and lyre. So we go from explosive expression of praise to the, the sweet sound of the strings. The harp mentioned is more, is more used and more mentioned than any other instrument for the Israelites of old. It was played powerfully by King David. In our worship here at St. Mary's, we have, as we've had already, celebration songs. And then there are more intimate songs that will come later in the service. In doing so, we're emulating the principles of worship in the Old Testament. Celebration and praise, trumpet and drums, intimate relationships, strings and voices. And verse 4 gives us the next instruments to worship God, the tambourine and dancing. There is a connection here with the deliverance of the Israelites in, in the Red Sea. This form of praise was jubilant and expressive. In Exodus it tells us, Then Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the woman, women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he hurled into the sea. The playing of the tambourine was often accompanied with dancing. The Hebrew word for dance indicates a twirl and a twist. And it was done in an attitude of praise and adoration. The hands and the feet were both set in motion and the entire body moved in response to God's greatness and his mighty acts of power. I wonder what it would take for all of us to spontaneously break into dancing for joy. Or perhaps it's something for the PCC. We'll see. <laughs> In verse 5, the tempo is picked up again. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. These instruments are used in religious ceremonies and played by the priests. They make a loud, distinctive sound when they're crashed together. When the walls of Jerusalem were dedicated in Nehemiah chapter 12, the Levites were sought out from where they lived. They were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving with the music of cymbals, harps and lyres. The phrase resounding cymbals can be translated the clamour of joy. I like that. God wants us to clamour with joy. And who is to praise? Verse 6 pulls it all together, doesn't it? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not merely the priests and the Levites, not just the generations or the congregations of people, but all living creatures are included in this great celebration. And some are getting in on the act. God has given each of us breath and we're called to breathe his praise. 
This psalm begins and ends with a command to praise the Lord. And we're to praise him everywhere, which means every possible place that we might be to remember and to recall and to give voice to his mighty acts because of who he is. And we're to praise him with a wide variety of instruments, with a trumpet and expressions of triumphant worship, with our voices, with our very bodies. Our Father God wants us to live lives of spontaneous praise. For the best instrument of praise is a man or a woman or a child wholly committed to him. We are to be that people of praise. There is nothing more majestic or more beautiful in the entire book of Psalms than this brief finale. And we must never let it become a cliche. So let's shout it out together now. Say it with me. Praise the Lord. And again, praise the Lord. And once more, praise the Lord. Oh, you're getting quite good at that, huh? All of our faculties then are to be engaged in praising God. The breath used to blow the trumpet and the flute. The fingers are used with the harp and strings. The whole hand hits the tambourine. The feet move in rhythm. The arms are used for the cymbals and dancing. Corporate worship is not meant to be passive. It's something that we're all supposed to engage in, not just to watch and to listen. We're supposed to be fully engaged in active worship. Lifting our praise to God by engaging our head, our heart and our hands. There's not just one way to worship, not just one musical style that's acceptable to God. There's a diversity of musical preferences here at St Mary's and that's a good thing. However we choose to worship, we should do so with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul and with all our strength. Now if you're at all like me, when you think about expressive and free worship in the Old Testament, it might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. In this country, we might think of church as a quiet place, a place of prayer and reflection of humility and peace. But psalm 150, the final psalm in God's hymn book, calls us to unbridled joy in our worship of our Lord and Saviour. So then we are called to praise the Lord wherever we are, for wherever we are, that is where God is, living in his temple, in you and in me. We are, praised, we are to praise God for what he's done and what he continues to do in our lives. We are to praise him for who he is, our Father in heaven, our Lord and Saviour, our Counselor, our Holy Spirit. We are to praise him with our whole selves, our work, our family, our hobbies, our homes, our bodies. We are called to praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And ask the band to come and lead us in worship so we can indeed praise the Lord. And let's prepare for that by standing together and let's recite Psalm 150 again together. Let's stand. Say, so stay together. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen.